I thought I'd review the RX100, the Sony camera, just because I've made a review about it before and I'll link to that video in the description. But in this video, I want to really showcase what this camera can do. I actually bought this camera when I was in Chiang Mai in Thailand and since then I've sort of been using it for my vlogs in Thailand. So this video, I really want to just show you like, I don't want to talk about the tech specs of this thing because the chances are you've already researched those and you can sort of read them online. What I want to do is show you real world situations, unedited footage, just of this camera and what it can do. Firstly, I think I'm going to start with just some, some slow motion shots. Uh, as you're probably aware, this camera can do slow motion at I think 700 uh, frames per second, all the way up to 1000 frames per second, depending on the settings that you, that you uh, have on it. Now, you'll notice that, first off, the slow motion is pretty good. You know, considering that an iPhone, iPhone, an iPhone 8 and above can do really good slow motion, but this really does give it that time standing still effect. And I don't know if it's because of the sensor on the camera or just, you know, the frame rate or something, but it just really does feel like that glossy slow motion cinematic footage when, when you film with this camera. Um, much more so than I could get with my iPhone. And I've got the iPhone 8, which is not the newest one, but it's, you know, it's, it's fairly up there. Um, so yeah, I really like, I really am pleased with the slow motion features on this camera. It does, it does really well. It looks kind of cool. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit more about the features. Um, and there is one thing I don't like about this camera, which I'm going to get into in a minute, but the chances are you already know what it is. So in terms of the audio, the audio for, for the most part is pretty good. It has fairly good wind reduction. It has quite good isolating sound if you're walking in a busy area. And you know, the audio from this video that you're hearing now, this is all from the camera. This is unedited audio as well. I've not, you know, I've not improved this audio in any way in post-production or, or anything like that. So the audio is pretty good. The only thing I would say is that the microphone tends to be a lot better when you're when you're behind the camera as opposed to when you're in front of it like I am now. So an example of that, I'm just going to go and turn the camera around as I'm talking and as you can see, like as it's pointing towards me, it's fairly good, but then as I turn it away from me uh, and even bring it just a little bit closer, it becomes so much clearer. Uh, and I don't know why that is, I really wish that it was the other way round, but you know, what can you do? And it's not too bad and the audio from this, you know, when the mic's facing this way, it's still better than the other camera I was using, which was a Sony DSC WX500, which is a few marks behind this one in the uh, in a Sony Cybershot range. So the actual footage that the camera gets, the actual video quality, the vlog quality, is pretty good. I have to say it's better than any other camera I've used in the past. I haven't used many cameras, but I've certainly used the, kind of the Sony Cybershot, you know, the, the uh, DSC X WX500. That's quite a mouthful to say, isn't it? Um, and I've also used, uh, you know, iPhone 8, iPhone 7, um, which have pretty good 4K cameras with image stabilization. Now, this does have 4K, but I don't ever use it. And the reason for that is that not only does it take so much longer to edit and, and upload and whatever, but it doesn't have image stabilization when you film in 4K. So, it's, so it's, you get a shaky video. And on top of that, you can only film for five minutes at a time, which I know isn't the end of the world if you're vlogging because you tend to do like short bursts of video, don't you? And then you edit it all together at the end. What I like to do though, is I like to sort of have the camera rolling and then pick the best bits out later. I don't like to sort of pick and choose the moments when I film. I like to just press film. I've got a huge SD card in there. You know, I like to just press film, you know, roll it for 20 or 30 minutes just filming random stuff and then pick out the best bits that make sense later. I like to have the option of having all of those little bits of footage to like connect into the vlog when I'm editing it. And obviously I can't do that in 4K. And even if I could film for more than five minutes, there wouldn't be any image stabilization, so it would be all shaky. That is a big downside and I hope Sony see this and you know, I mean, there's loads of reviews complaining about that, so I'm sure they're aware of the problem. That being said, it's absolutely fine in 1080p, it works fine, you know, this is a 1080p video, it's quite good quality. And I feel like you're sort of distracted from the fact that it's not 4K, you know, by the depth of field and the actual sensor of the camera itself. Like, for example, say if I bring something closer into the camera. If I bring something closer into the camera like this, you can see the quality is really good and it, it blurs the background out completely and focuses on what you're trying to film. Now. That distracts from the fact that it's not 4K because you're, as the watcher of the vlog, as the viewer, you're so immersed in the subject, which is what the camera is highlighting, that you you forget about the quality and you just focus on the filmmaking, and that's really important to me. So yeah, it might not have 4K, but it doesn't really need it. And to be honest, most people aren't ready for 4K anyway. You know, like most people watch vlogs on their phones. You can't tell if it's 4K on your phone. 
you know, unless you have a really, really big, like, galaxy type screen and you're really looking for the pixels and stuff and you're looking for the quality but in most cases 1080p is almost indistinguishable from 4k especially on a phone or most laptops you know plus it's not much of a difference i mean it is an upgrade yes but it's not so much of an upgrade that you need to sacrifice other things for it so as i said the f-stop on this camera is pretty low i think it goes down to 1.6 or something something like that 1.6 1.8 um, which is really low, meaning you can get that depth of field. You can blur out the background when you focus on something in front of you. Um, it blurs the background out almost entirely, and you can focus on that. And then as you take it away, it focuses again on the subject. You know, it constantly auto focuses on the thing that you're trying to film. There are loads of settings that I'm not even going to go into on this camera because they're just they're fairly boring. You know, you probably already know about them. The autofocus, you can change all the settings manually and decide what to focus on. So I'm just going to go and show you some real world footage, like I've probably been overlaying it already on this video. Um, but as you can see, it has a really good sensor, it's able to show what I'm trying to show pretty easily. The audio is pretty good as well. Um, I haven't even used the things like the flash or the viewfinder, you know, they're features but I don't really use them. I just literally grab this thing, flip the camera up, vlog something, you know, maybe get a couple of cinematic shots of like panning around whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing. That's pretty much it. You know, the reason I got this camera mainly is the ability to blur out the background when I'm focusing on something small. Um, that was really cool, I thought that was a really good feature. Okay, so I'm going to end on what I didn't like and then sort of give a summary. So the one, the, the couple of things I didn't like is obviously the 4K, I've mentioned that. Uh, I don't like the fact that the microphone is better when you're behind the camera. And I also don't like the zoom. Compared to the other camera that I had, the zoom on that was 30 times optical and then up to 60 times if you combine that with the digital zoom which is a huge zoom, that's almost a telephoto lens, really, really long zoom. You can zoom in a long way away and get a really good quality of image. Whereas with this, you don't have even a quarter of that zoom. You know, I think you have up to a six times zoom or something like that. It's a really low number and you do sort of notice it. If you want to, if, especially if you're used to using a, a Cybershot that has a bigger zoom or even any camera that has a bigger zoom, you're used to being able to quickly zoom in on something far away and get a good shot of it. Whereas with this, with the RX100, you can't do that. You know, you have to be near what you're filming or taking a photo of. So that is a bit of a downside. Overall, I'm very happy that I upgraded to this camera. Um, you know, I have no regrets about that at all. This is my main camera. I don't really use the other one at all now. I might even sell it. So overall, this is now my main vlogging camera. This is a, I would say this is the perfect camera for travel vlogging or you know daily vlogs because it's so compact. It fits in your pocket. It's got a great quality. It's got a flip screen. You know, it can blur the background out. It, you don't really need anything else to be honest. You really don't. Um, you know, put a huge capacity SD card in this. Get a tripod like the one I'm using. I'm using this like telescopic tripod that you can just use as a vlogging stick and a tripod. You don't need anything else. You know, that is really. I would say the best setup for vlogging uh, because you don't, I, I don't want to be carrying something massive around like you know I'm not Casey Neistat where he carries this huge DSLR around he's very good at it but I can't do that you know I can't I don't think I would make as many films if I had that big of a setup the idea with this is I like to have something really small and compact that I'm not scared to just take out wherever I am and start filming and I think that's the main thing just use a setup that you actually would use a lot um, if you have a big or complicated or even expensive setup, you're going to be much less inclined to use it. And I think that's a huge drawback for the, some of these bigger cameras. They might have a better quality, but if you're not going to use them, it doesn't matter. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. The link to this camera, if you are interested, is in the description. The link to this tripod is in the description. It's a pretty cool one. Um, and I'll see you next.